You mean I'm here for more? More than just showing up at work or showing up in my business and doing my thing and doing what I want to do every day? I understand. Today is energy type number seven in the Cheryl Light You. I call it the Cheryl Light You Leadership Energy Model. Loving this book. I can't tell you how much I've gotten out of this book and how much it's helped me personally clarify little blocks that I've had going on and showing up in my life. The exercises, the way of looking at it, the perspective, the tie-in of energy and leadership, and how it helps me grow and supersize my business, incredibly valuable. So I will stop talking and hop into this type of energy. This type of energy, the I understand energy, is all about our purpose. It's why we're here, and it encourages us to know that, guess what? We're all here to do more than just live our life, live our little life and go through our day-to-day -day routines as if that's our only purpose is to just get through the day. We're all here as we develop as leaders and especially as we're growing our own businesses to be more, to do more, to have more and to share more with the world and to encourage others to do the same. So leadership energy model, of course, um, I love that this talks about Again, she refers to Janet Hagberg's book, Real Power, Stages of Personal Power in Organizations. And again, she's talking about jobs and organizations. But guess what? If you're supersizing your business, you're creating your own organization. So as you grow and develop, you're going to want to learn different leadership phases mm -hmm. and different energies that are associated with those leadership phases so that you can grow the organization to the point and the extent that you want it to be. And she says that stage five is usually the stage where leaders begin to become aware that they want to be of service to others. It's really fun to learn and grow and find out new things and learn new strategies like leadership energy. But what really gives most of us juice and what really keeps us moving forward is sharing that information or providing service to other people. Me, in my own silly little way, am providing service to other people by sharing what I'm learning in this little book. That is me providing service to other people. And that to me is a lot more fun than just me reading and applying the book. It's more fun for me to share it with other people knowing that if it has this profound an impact on me, it can certainly have a profound impact on you. So I love that at some point in our, in our careers and in our businesses, we realize, oh, I guess there's more to this than just selling widgets. I guess there's more to this than just making toilet paper. I guess there's more to this than what I had first imagined when I started my business or I started my operation or I took this job. And the interesting thing about I understand or the big picture energy of both the I see and I understand energy in this segment, the bigger purpose in the world, the bigger picture, is that it's hard to define. It's hard for people to see and understand. It's more about being a leader and, and setting the example than it is about a specific characteristic that you would demonstrate as a leader. The previous energies all worked on how you would demonstrate and be a, a leader in terms of believing in yourself more and connecting with other people. But this one's tougher because it's about being. It's about uh, emanating or emanating. It's about emitting the presence of, well, I guess your own presence, your own presence of being, I guess, a human being. So the energy ingredient, of course, for I understand is at the top of our head. It's the crown of our head. It's where we're connected to higher learning, higher self, higher understanding, if you have any idea what I'm talking about in that. Um, and that's where the energy ingredient is. It provides clarity of our thoughts and beliefs, and it allows us to expand our purpose of life beyond just ourselves. We all want to live a great life and have our basic needs met, but at some point, once all your basic needs are met, you're like, okay, well, is this all there is? Is just, you know, going to work or going to my business every day and then doing the same thing day in and day out, or maybe doing different things day in and day out, but really, you get to the point where you ask yourself, is this all there is? And then the answer is always, no, there's way more. You're supposed to have a purpose. You're supposed to be here for a higher power. Um, Eastern philosophy always encourages us that, you know, when you when you get an idea for a higher calling, you ask yourself, what, what, who, me, am I supposed to do this? And the answer is, Always, yes. Yes, you are. If you got the idea, you are supposed to do it. You are supposed to follow through on that vision, that purpose, that mission that is, is delivered to you. You wouldn't think of it if it wasn't something that you were more than capable of doing and that you're supposed to be doing because that's your way of impacting the world and making the world a better place. And 
I love that it says here, your life experiences lead you to understanding your purpose. Everybody's got a purpose and you discover your purpose by experiencing your life as only you uniquely can. Again, she gives great examples of leaders that are, are using these principles and learning these principles in her chapters. Everybody should get this book and read it. It's, it's very, very powerful. If you understand, which we're understanding today, the power of the energy and tying that together with your leadership skills and what that can help you to do to grow and, and build the business of your dreams. So the I understand energy opens up by choosing a non to be non-judgmental about life and about experiences and about events. Now this is tough, right? For most of us, I will admit that I didn't get non-judgmental about things until after my sudden cardiac arrest. And I'm going to recommend that you don't have a sudden cardiac arrest and die to figure out that you don't have to be judgmental about things that happen and events in your life. To engage this I understand energy, you have to engage your emotions. Now, that's another one that's tough for a lot of us because there's emotions that we stuff down and we don't want to admit that we have. Like, you know, a lot of us don't want to admit that we get pissed off and angry at other people sometimes or that we get angry about situations. But until we let that anger energy just flow through us non-judgmentally and we say, you know what, it's okay for me to be mad about this right now. I'll get over it in a few minutes. Everybody gets angry sometime. I'm not going to judge it. I'm just going to let it flow and let it go. And that's what happens. Other suggestions for coming in to alignment with this type of energy are meditation, releasing emotions. Picture, I love this, picture a bird that you release to fly away. You watch the bird, you acknowledge the bird, and you allow it to fly away. So I'm feeling angry at, say, my ex-husband. I think about it. I think about him as a bird, and I'm letting him fly away. And as I release the bird, I see the bird fly away, and I just let the energy and that anger just go. Um, prayer and then time in nature are other ways to activate this type of energy she gives us action learning again as we're doing these exercises we want to focus on the crown of our head or think about the crown of our head and she gives us a two-step exercise the first one I'm trying today because this is awesome and then the second one the first one is about defining our purpose and the second one is about bringing our purpose into our daily lives because the secret is if we do something every day a little bit every day that becomes a habit and habits create our life so step one, defining your purpose. She gives us an exercise. Beatrice Berry, she says in her book, I'm on my way, but your feet, uh, your foot is on my head. Says She has just asked two questions to define purpose. She says, why me? And then here now. And Cheryl uses um, a little bit more robust strategy and activity for finding this. And I like this, so I'm going to try this today. She says, grab a notebook. You'll be documenting your she says career timeline, but I'm going to say your life timeline, your business timeline. I've done this exercise as a life timeline exercise where you identify all the milestones in your past and then you're going to answer three questions about them. What was your strength in this particular situation? What did you enjoy and what value did you bring? Then you're going to review all the answers to all these milestones and Ask yourself, well, what do I notice? Are there any patterns to the answers? Because that will lead to your purpose. Then you're going to write a statement answering the following questions. What has been the purpose of your life so far? How do you share this with others? And what do you believe is your purpose as a leader or as a business owner? That is step one, defining your purpose. Now, step two is about bringing it into your daily life. So what you're going to do is you're going to post your purpose statement in a place where you're going to have easy access to it, where you're going to see it. I'm one of those people that put stuff on my bathroom mirror. So you can put on your bathroom mirror. I put things on my computer monitor. You can put things on your computer monitor. Wherever works for you. On the refrigerator. <laughs> wherever you will see it. Then, before you begin your day, review your purpose statement and identify three high-value leadership activities that you can do. Now, these don't have to be big things, but they're high-value leadership. So, for example, she says, call Sue. Send an email to Ken. Listen more than speak at today's meeting. Now, those are very specific, very measurable. Either I did them or I didn't activities. And the key to making things a habit and having them work for you in your life is making them automatic Now, and easy to measure. The things we measure get attention and the things we pay attention to create what we want. So we want to have things that can be measured in terms of either a yes or a no. Then we're going to write these three high-value items 
in a place where we can access him throughout the day. We're gonna we're gonna write, call Sue, send an email to Ken, and listen to this somewhere where we can see it so that we remember to do it. I use post-it notes, little warning post-it notes or whatever to remind me to do things like this. Then you're going to at the end of the day go back and say, Did I do it? If you did it, awesome. If you didn't, eh, no big deal. I'll do it tomorrow and make sure you do it tomorrow. And then make this a daily habit. Do this every single day. And that will help you open and increase your I understand energy and be living your purpose every single day. That's it. Tomorrow we are going to bring it all together. The whole model, we're going to put it all together and talk about how you can use it to supersize your business. Bye. I will catch you tomorrow.